Well, hello everybody. Um, there is absolutely no doubting the popularity of the Toppelmans by looking out at this crowd, so we really appreciate having you here. My name is Helen Del Judas. I'm the curator of exhibitions and collections here at the Miller Art Museum. Um, and there's a few people I just want to thank before we get started because I'm likely to forget to do that, and that's rude. Um, I would like to thank Karen Malson, um, her father Richard Malson, and of course Martha, Martha Biaski for um, being local collectors who graciously loaned artworks to us um, for the making of this exhibit. All of these pieces come from private collections, either theirs or those of the family. So we're really very grateful to have this exhibit. So this is the studio door, and today I'm gonna to sit down in conversation with Lars and Lisa Toppelman. Thank you for being here. Um, Lisa has traveled a long way with some difficulties, so I really appreciate you taking the time out of your life to do this. We worked very closely on putting together um, the narrative of this exhibit. This exhibit tells the story of a town, it tells the story of a family, and it tells the story of two individual talents. And um, thank you for being here, you guys. Thank you. It's our pleasure. So, so I want to start in the beginning. Tell me a little bit about your, and I, I kind of feel like this audience is going to know more about the compliments than I do. Am I correct on that? I, I really feel like I'm the one that's going to be learning here today. Yeah. Tell me about their beginning. They met in Chicago, independently moved here. Um, who were they in the beginning? Who were they as young people? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Before I start, though, can I just say you thank can. you? You know, and we're just we're so grateful to for this opportunity to have this exhibition, to have all of you here, and you know, share this moment with with you all. And um, it's just really, really special to us. And we just want to thank you all for being here and being a part of our lives and a part of our parents' lives and a part of the, you know the community that that made them. You know, yeah. so. But yeah, but. Getting to your question, before um, they came here, they were first and foremost immigrants. You know, so they, that's how their journey started, coming to America with a dream of, you know, family starting and, new, and starting right? new, a fresh start. Um, you know, I think many immigrants, many of your families would have, you know, come with the same vision of coming to a new country and, and, and starting out and, and seeing what opportunity there, there could be. So first and foremost, they were, they were immigrants that um, became independent of each other. Um, um, our father, um, my, my mother came first. Um, she uh, was sponsored through her Danish relatives. Um, so she came through Ellis Island and, and lived in New York first and then- What year was that? That was 1956. And um, yeah, and then our father came independent uh, through uh, Iowa, also through uh, different uh, friends that, that sponsored him. And they ended up, both ended up in Chicago and there was a big German community there. So, yeah. and they were, um, you know, young and, and, and going out a lot and meeting people and they were very social. And, um, and then it just so happened that uh, somehow uh, someone said to, my father, our father said, um, you know, oh, there's this artist um, woman. I, I think you might have a lot in common. You know, maybe you want her number. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, so he got he got her number, and um, and they talked. They he called. You know, they 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 had a phone relationship before they actually met each other, and. Um, our mother was very secretive of she didn't want him to know where she lived because she thought in case ah, yes. she didn't you know she was she was smart so um and then they they yeah ended up after a couple of weeks uh, on the phone and i think realizing that they had so much in common they really just talked about art and and you know the, their 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 backgrounds you know that were coming you know coming from germany and having you know lived through the war and um, they had a lot in common, and, and then especially, you know, the, the, the art that they were uh, doing. And my mother, our mother was a, was a fashion designer at the time, and she made uh, also cartoons, and she worked at a, in a studio, and, and our father was a uh, graphic designer. So um, Where was she yeah. working? What company was she working for? Do you know? Um, I think it was independent, but yeah. I, I don't remember the name. The name so she was, taking, we, she was taking jobs. Yeah, yeah, benefits. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And also working as a waitress. So yeah, there wasn't full time the artwork. Yeah, so for sure. She worked as a waitress to yeah to subsidize that in life in general. Yeah. And so then they started dating. They started getting closer. When did they start coming to Door County? In uh, the late fifties. 
So, and they also came independent of each other, their first to trip Door to Door County. Yeah, so my mother was working at, at, the, at the restaurant and they said, oh, you know, there's this beautiful place called Door County, um, and, but she, she made it as far as Algoma. So Algoma is Algoma so is considered Door County, is it? Sure. Not really. And right, anyway, you people anyway, that. anyway, so she 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 stayed in Algoma, but she that was her first trip, and 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 our father came with uh, his friend, the one that sponsored him, who was also a German um, that, that was living in Iowa, and they drove up from Iowa, and they did a big tour around the the, the county, and and this friend actually ended up. Um, immigrating to Australia and I when I was living in Australia I met with him and he showed me all the old photos of their trip to their Door, road County. Trip to Door County. Yeah, wow. so it was so strange. Here I was like in Australia looking at photos of Door County from the fifties. Right. And, yeah, and hearing about their experiences of yeah, they went all the way up to Washington Island and they just thought it was a beautiful place and then and then when they met then they both that was another thing they shared like they were like oh you've been to Door County oh you've been to Door County oh you know that was like something that they had in common and then they um, and then they when they had the family they then we used to vacation up here and that was every every in Bailey's Harbor yeah every trip we every holiday we did they um, you know did they did Karsten do plein air? I know that he loved to do to paint on plein air. So was he doing plein air at that time when he came up here? Yes. And yes. Did your yeah. mom do any of that kind of stuff? Did she sketch? She was or? busy with the kids, so he, <laughs> he went off painting, <laughs> and she was taking care of the kids. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. So Classic. that's that was how it. Yeah, that's how it started. So, yeah, that's yeah. how it started. And when yeah. did they decide to? This is the place. Did they sit down? Who? 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 Who first nudged that idea? Into I them? think it was our mom. Your mom. Yeah, she was the spark for that. She, she said, "We can do it. We can move to Door County. We can. We can buy this place. It came for sale in Ephraim, and uh, it was her idea to move up. My father was a little bit skeptical, but you know they did it. And my dad still uh, worked in Chicago, so we he commuted. I think for about a year, the first maybe a year, year and a half. Yeah. So um, he didn't want to give up health insurance and you sure, know, sure. <laughs> health and security of a job, <laughs> right? Yeah. And when they came here, they, I mean, was that the idea that they were going to become artists? Well, they were going to open a gallery. Absolutely. They were already having. We had a big property outside of Chicago in Keeneyville, and they had a big barn in the back, and um, they would have exhibits and well, art, um, sales. art sales. So they would invite, and they were party people. So they invited all their friends, and they would had these shows and they would sell out and they were like okay i think we're onto something here so they then thought well where could we do that in door county you know could we yeah transport that up that mood to that a place, feeling that yeah scene. to a place where they felt they could they could live and be inspired you know by nature around them and and be their own boss and and um yeah not have anyone to answer to and and yeah, yeah. see if they could make it that was the plan. You know, did they did they choose Ephraim specifically? I mean, when when we were writing this, one of the thing, and you'll read throughout the cards as as you go through the exhibit. You know, there was this great love of Ephraim and all these incredible paintings, and these are only just a few, right? They they throughout their careers, both of them painted this town. So, did they choose Ephraim? Yes, uh, they I think so. they looked Absolutely. at we looked at a couple of properties in Bailey's Harbor, but Ephraim was what they really wanted. We also actually stayed in Bailey's Harbor because it was cheaper to stay there than on the other side. So right. that's kind of how how we, how we started there. But they they Ephraim was their love, and then um, the the they made an offer on a place in Bailey's Harbor, and it fell through. And then they found the the Larson property in Ephraim, and um, and their offer was accepted, and that was yeah. And that, and that was, you know, the property with the, with the cottages. So they thought, you know, if they, if they couldn't make it as in, in with the art gallery, they, they would rent out the cottages. And then my mother had a backup plan that if she couldn't make it as, as an artist, she'd open a restaurant, you know? So she, nice. she was determined, you know, one way or another to, to make it. And she pulled our father along who, again, for the first year was very reluctant. And, um, but, uh, but she, she made it happen, yeah. So, um, what do you think it is about Ephraim? Is, does, are there like similarities to their, I know that they were also enchanted with Rothenburg, which we'll talk about later. What, what was it about Ephraim in particular that, that was so perfect for them? I what, think it was the scale and also the, the proximity of the, the buildings water. to the water and just the whole, you know, the, the two, 
two church steeples and Wilson's. And, I mean, there's just a combination of, of all those things. It was really magical. The quaintness, I think the, the history of, you know, the, the Moravians and the, just that, that everything was white and it was just, it was just clean and pure and, and, and so um, picturesque that I think that's what really they just loved. You know, kind of fit their aesthetic. It just fit the aesthetic. Fit what they were of, used to. Yeah, and, yeah, the aesthetic yeah. Of, of the village and just the, 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 you know, the beauty of the water and the sunsets over the water. It just, yeah, they just loved it. Yeah, it seems obvious to me that they would choose Ephraim. Learning about them in this, but you know, I wanted to hear it from you guys, but what specifically it was about the town. I mean, mm -hmm. the paintings you can see, there's a lot of love in all their paintings, but there's a particular love in the paintings of Ephraim, so. And so tell me about the family. Tell me about growing up with these two, if they are say, <laughs> dare I say flamboyant, uh, outgoing artists. Yeah, well, um, they were busy, you know, and we ran wild, you know. Yeah, we were. <laughs> no sign of that. I think uh, we could have a few out there that could attest to, to that. We, uh, you know, they were very, very focused on um, their life and, and, and painting and the gallery, and, and we just were kind of, you know, and it was different. It was different times back then. It wasn't, you know, you, they weren't worried about anything. You just played on the streets and you, 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 you left in the morning and you came home in the evening, you know, and it was like we, she had a dinner bell and when the dinner bell, when the dinner bell rang, that's <laughs> when we came home. And, did you come home right away? And, or? Yeah, we did. And, and like, we yeah. took another 10 that minutes. It was right away. But there were no, <laughs> there, and there were no questions like, where were you? What did you do? What did, you know, it was, we were running wild and having fun and yeah. playing with kids and over at other people's houses. And it was great. You yeah. know, we, we, we didn't, you know, we didn't have a, you know, it was a very carefree, fun way to grow up you know and um yeah and safe it was it was because I, I grew up yeah. exactly the same way that i was out running wild and my parents never asked questions and we were never really with adults like maybe stick with your sister kind of a thing but i was in inner city chicago okay so you know okay. what i mean <laughs> <laughs> maybe they didn't yeah. run into as much stuff as i did but you know no. That's wonderful. But we had an Ephraim, you know, it was nice because we had like the locals that lived there all year round. And then we had, you know, so many summer people that would come up in the summer and that we would, so we had like these double friends, you know, of like, yeah, just the, the, the people the would return and you'd yeah, see them and again. Yeah, it, it was fun. And summers mm -hmm. were always, of course, the, the highlight of the year. You know? So were you sort of celebrities amongst those kids? Like the ones that get to live here all the time kind of thing? I don't know about that, no? but, but it was, it was actually interesting living because we lived in the gallery so we there was rooms upstairs and that's where we lived but our kitchen was through the gallery so when the gallery was open we would run through the gallery <laughs> as fast as we could get in trouble and, and so but we didn't, i mean it, we didn't know anything different it was like well you live in a gallery you know right. it's like you look at paintings yeah. as you're going through the kitchen to go have dinner you yeah know? yeah so or the studio right where the yeah. studios were upstairs yeah. as well is yeah. that right three stories that's an incredible house yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. it was a really cool house. But, and uh, on the other hand, we, you know, we were also, our growing up was a little bit different, you know, because our parents were a little bit different, you know, than the, the locals maybe, you know, we were, um, you know, children of, of artists, but we were also children of immigrants, you know, that, that spoke German to each other in the home and mm -hmm. had, they had very, he my mother had a very heavy accent, you know, so people that would come over to our house, you know, it was, um, you know, sometimes a real experience, you know, to... <laughs> interact with that kind of a, an environment so we were um i don't know if we were celebrities but we were definitely a little bit special we were, you know? different. We, we were different. different we were different you know and i mean and, and growing up it was it's sometimes you know quite hard you know people you know say oh you know don't go over to lisa's house her mom's an alien you know <laughs> she speaks this weird language and she yells at her in this weird heavy accent and so it was you know it was challenging and i mean i think we appreciated them more when we were older, yeah, older. um sure. that we could see you know the, the 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 beauty in that but but when you were young and you just want to fit in and be like everybody else it was um hard sometimes sometimes challenging we were, yeah yeah, yeah. So they're a little bit different. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I um, never had the opportunity to meet your mom, but I did without knowing, you know, with a little bit of hindsight, boy, but um, I did meet your dad one time. Um, he submitted to the juried annual the first year that I took this position here, and he came to the opening, and the only thing I remember about him is the color pink. 
right? He was, I think he was wearing pink pants or pink shirt or something. There was a lot of pink going on and they were stylish, huh? Were they always stylish like that, even when they were younger, or? Yes, yeah. yes they were, yeah. I think you can see it in some of the photos, too, that are around here mm -hmm. on some of the cards, but there was uh, lots of colors and patterns Lots going of colors on. and patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They like to sort of thematically dress together, mm -hmm. right? They did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were pretty much a dynamic duo. They were a dynamic <laughs> duo. Yeah. And I can only imagine their personalities reflected exactly, exactly that, how they dressed. Was your mom, I have this feeling, and I know that a lot of you people already know the answer to this question. Was your mom, I get this feeling that your mom was a little quieter than your father. Was he the outgoing <laughs> one? <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Proven wrong. Pick that up. Yeah, no, no. It, the reverse, actually. Yeah. Oh, she, she was the... He was the quiet, more introspective oh. one who he had quite a sense of humor, but if she ever let him talk, then... <laughs> no, she was definitely more the... She was yeah. the vivacious, the, the face of yeah. the couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, but but uh, you know, in a nice partnership, I think they had their their roles and their. It was very clear, you know, and they they complemented each other very well. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so much fun um, following this story, um, you know, and learning about that, working with you guys and learning about them, and it's been quite an adventure. Um, tell me about how they. I'm I'm curious about Tenerife. And Rothenburg, because in doing this and writing the cards and talking with you, they seem to spend a lot of time of the year in these, you know, these places. How did how did they manage all that with a family and a gallery to run and yeah. what was the <laughs> schedule like that they they were going out to these places? Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Well, in fact, we have one of our babysitters in the audience who used to babysit us. They would, you know, they were carefree. They, I don't think you would do today what they did back then. You know, this was the 70s. They just went to Europe, you know, and left us with the babysitter and called once a week. Everything okay? Yeah. You know? Two months? How long was it? Yeah. A month. A month. Sometimes. A, yeah. Sometimes. Six weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they so were, it was carefree. Sometimes we stayed with our aunt, you know, and so we, it was, it was, yeah. So that's how it started. They were always pulled, you know, they wanted to go back to Europe and, and um, be there as much as they could. They started going back like when we were in our teens, yeah. uh, about a month, and then it started to increase two months, three months. Mm -hmm. And then when we started becoming more independent, um, then they would go for longer. Right, um, sure. So and then they increased to like almost half a year that they were. And they um, established like a like a routine. They would go to Germany first, then they would go to the Canary Islands because that's just a flight, for, you know, sure. shorter flight. And then they would come back to Germany and then back to the states. But they would bring a package full of canvases and and a watercolor paper, and they would basically paint the whole time. So they would be working. They brought that with them. They brought, they they brought, brought all their supplies with them. Yeah. So they would, they would leave with it, um, you know. Empty, empty basically and then they come back with new paintings and so we would, we wow. would be able to get to see them when, when they got back it was great and did they bring you presents what kind of presents did they bring home paintings paintings <laughs> that's it <laughs> you didn't get like the special treat from dinner even when well, they went to hong kong once we got rolex watches oh, so. there you go. real oh, rolex right. watches <laughs> yeah, real. Right. Yeah. no but yeah they so they because they had their particular um you know materials that they liked and they had the places that they ordered from and, they, and my dad always had uh, the special paper and the special paint so they sure. ordered all of that and were always stocked and packed and then they they moved with that and then yeah left empty and came back and they were always very um you know um <coughs> diligent they they were always painting you know it wasn't it was always something that they wanted to do and enjoy doing and it was just part of everywhere they went there was always painting involved. It's so. really incredible. You know, I, I said in our little member preview yesterday in our talk that um, I'm working with another a daughter of an artist who has passed and both her mother and father were painters. And it's so common that, um, you know, the pressures of raising a family and working and supporting your lifestyle forces one or the other to get a job. And most of the time it's the woman. Mm. that has to kind of give up her art career to like promote his art career and that's what happened to um, Joseph Freebert who you know I'm working with his daughter to tell their story um, but your parents like worked it out how I mean 
Well, yeah, she she painted she, all night. You know, she, 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 she made worked it, all day. She made yeah, the family. Yeah. She did the family stuff in the daytime, and then she painted in the night. Yeah, yeah. The first couple of years, yeah, to yeah. just keep the production going, and and that that was the only time she had time to right. do it. So she did. That's a lot. Sacrifice a but lot. But she had yeah. a lot of energy, so it yeah. worked out pretty good. <laughs> She's a, that's like where Lars gets his energy yeah, from. And this yeah. one, too. So. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You'd have to have a lot of energy, my God, to yeah. work yeah. all day with the family and then work all night. And you guys went to Gibraltar, is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As well as Tanya went to Gibraltar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Tanya won the High School Salon of Art the, here at the Miller Art Museum. She won the award for that, huh? Yes. She was nice. very talented. Did you guys yeah. ever enter that? Were you ever in the no. Miller Art Museum High School Salon of Art? <laughs> yes, you I were was. an artistic? Yes, were? I was. Yes, I was. You were? Yes, okay. Yes, yep. And they hung my painting upside down, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was an abstract, so they couldn't have known. It was like the Mondrian, you know, that's been hanging upside down for 60 years, yeah. but no. I will but, admit, I have yeah. actually hung things accidentally upside down, but yeah. it's, hey man, it's easy to do. <laughs> so Sometimes it's easy to do. That's great. So you're, you're artistic as well? Semi. Semi. Semi, but that was growing up. It was always like you know, because our sister was you know she she tragically passed as most of you know, um, but she was very talented and and you know so she kind of w was the oldest so she had that sort of covered you know mm -hmm. so and then Lars was coming up th he was also very creative and then it was like me you know and then <laughs> and everybody was like ah oh, you know you you have, get, let Lisa paint that she she her parents aren't artists she must be good at that you know and I'd be like but but but, but I'm not you know I mean I enjoyed art class I have you know my we had fun you know with my my classmates and in, in from high school we I enjoyed it um Robert Merline was our teacher who we, we absolutely loved but he instilled in me more the the love of art uh, but more on the other side you know so so I studied art history and curator and so I'm I'm more on the other side and I was also the framer in in the gallery for them for pretty much oh, uh, that's many, many years so, oh, so I was always on the other side yeah but and Lars, you're a photographer yeah. right I mean yes so. my father was a good photographer so he basically oh told me kind of the basics of composition and some of the technical things and so uh, we kind of like you know I mean he he taught me sort of the basics and then I went on in high school and took like chemical and based then, photography and stuff it must have been in oh yeah in the yeah. early days the huh? classic well, it was the, yeah, old, the, old the olden school, days yeah. with the <laughs> tongs and the he didn't do darkroom but it was it was uh, he did uh, slides so oh, color okay. slides yeah but um now I noticed that Lisa, um, excuse me, um, Tanya's signature is quite like Karsten's signature. When you look at this painting, so you know um, we have one artwork in the exhibit that was by um, Tanya, and she and her father were out on plein air painting and sort of looking at the same scene and sort of did their own version of the same scene. But then when you look at the signature, it also is nearly identical the way she signs her name mm. so he had a huge influence on her and your mother probably as well with I see them I saw her you know little taking this little thing from Ellen and taking this little thing from Karsten but then having her own perspective it was really mm. quite fascinating you know Ellen always included the dog or a cat yeah. there's some cats yeah I've seen some yeah. cats and then she often Tanya often included a bird, the, the cardinal. cardinal in particular, mm -hmm. right, and did paintings of birds. Yeah, she loved animals, and uh, she was just really, really good. And I think, yeah, she was mainly inspired by, by our parents, but again, at Gibraltar, she had some very good art teachers, so I think it was really nice to be in a community where, you know, arts were so important, and it, was, it wasn't, it um, was you know, any, anything strange. It was, it was supported, and, and it, it just was very natural. So it was, yeah, she, I think she got a lot of support at, at, at home and at, and at school, so it was really nice. That's wonderful, mm -hmm. yeah. It's great to have that piece there. I love looking at, those are two of my favorite pieces in the exhibit, actually. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about their individual talents. I know Karsten always, he, he was interested in botanicals and natural scenes, landscapes, um, architecture and structures. Did he ever paint um, figures? It's, to my knowledge, these are the only figures he ever painted, correct? Of the family. Of like the family. He did some self-portraits, which are hanging in there. Um, and then some later um, portraits of like the, the girl with the dog, and, um, but not so much. You know, and this is the only time he, he painted the family. It's so. the only time he painted the family. Yeah. yeah. Everybody with their favorite item, right? 
yeah. And your mother, did she, because she was running the family, um, basically, you know, doing that part of um, their lifestyle, was she able to produce as much as him? I feel like he produced really regularly and an enormous amount of work. Was yeah. she able to do do that? I mean, her paintings are so much more detailed. and Exactly. Yeah, he, I think his volume was way higher as far as the amount of paintings that he produced. Mm -hmm. and, and also it has to do with the medium because if he's doing watercolor, you know, he could do that in a few hours. Right. And, and you know, you talk, look at one of these acrylic paintings that my mother did. This is days, weeks. Months know, sometimes, months. Yeah. yeah, the detail was incredible. So hers took... And her paintings tend to be a little larger too, right? Yeah, yeah. and more, much more detailed. Much so, more detailed. Yeah. And she didn't, I mean, I don't know if she painted every day, you know, but no. our father painted every day. She had a routine. So she had days maybe where she didn't paint. I see. But he didn't really go through a day where there wasn't some... He had a routine, of, so yeah. he had it a was practice. There, it was therapeutic for him. He really counted on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every day. Mm. Elaborate on that. He counted on it. No, I think he was. It was part of his routine, and I think he got into a zone where he really was. It was like muscle memory, and just I don't know how he, you he's like it, he needed it. It was. I mean, that is kind of you know that artistic <laughs> sort of outlet. I think it was just the way that he um, coped with the world somehow. You know, he 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 needed it, and it was a way for him. He had a very busy mind. I also have a very busy mind and think a lot of things. And sometimes you end up going down the wrong, you know, thinking path, the negative, or you know, these kinds of things. And I think painting was a way to sort of even him out, you know. So it was it was a real need. Like he 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 needed it. It was a way for him to focus, and he could he was creating something beautiful, and he he was extremely focused, and it it brought him the the balance that that he needed in his life you know i i'm a painter and i kind of feel like and other painters who might be here can can maybe yay or nay me on this but um i feel like becoming a painter is demanding alone time you know like you you I mean, you have to be alone to do it you, i mean there's people who collaborate on paintings but generally you have to be alone to do it and it's a way of carving out your own space mm. for you and your mind to have a relationship and engage and yeah. you know, do that? Do you, do you feel like that's something that was true of Karsten yeah, in particular? Yeah, for him it was also like a way for him to calm his mind, you know, I think it was a, painting was a really calming experience for him and, and it was, he was highly concentrated and, and it was, it was, it was just calming for him and, and he found um, peace in it and, and <coughs> beauty and, and a way to just, yeah, um, was that Manage. true for your mom too? No, I think she was very no. different. Yeah. yeah, she, she, um, she painted because I mean she 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 didn't need it like like he did. Yeah, um, and I think she she enjoyed it and she enjoyed the joy that it brought to other people and she enjoyed painting joy into her paintings and and so she just had a very different. Um, way that it meant something different to her it's just that yeah it was very different what what it, what painting meant to them well that's something that runs through all of their paintings both of them is joy there's no discontent in their paintings ever yeah that's i mean true. she your mother in particular infuses this sort of um community unison and <laughs> celebration and you know simple she she makes she puts a kaleidoscope on the simplest of moments in a family or or you know to yeah kind of resolve. and part of that is the trick of using this sort of imagined past like the fashion on the um on the figures and it, you know they're automatically placed in some time that you can't quite put your finger on but yeah you know it's a time that's idyllic and and joyful. simpler somehow simpler and, and, somehow yeah and that you and that's you know that uh, joy was actually one of her favorite words you know she always said enjoy 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 mm -hmm. and you know in some of her paintings joys at the old pond and she just she loved the word joy and um, and I think you know that is her main um, you know goal was to was to convey that joy and, and bring that joy in, in her paintings and and so it was that, that but and, and for our father, you know, he he conveyed it differently. You know, I think they again they they're, they're bright and they're and they're beautiful. It's a, he conveyed beauty as well, 
um, but differently, you know. Um, and my mother, Playful. yeah, but but my mother was a, our mother was a people person, you know. She yeah. loved people, so that's why there's people in her paintings because <laughs> Lots of she them. loved people yeah. and she loved people's stories and she loved communicating. And 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 and, and our father was, you know, they're more, you know, they're more, um, they're more peaceful. They're calm. They're 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 still. Um, you know, beautiful, but but they they don't. There's no people in them, you right. know, as such. You know, um, so again, carving out alone time. Yeah, right. to you know. to um, yeah, convey that sort of peacefulness and and um, calmness. I think that what he was feeling in himself to convey that through his paintings. Mm -hmm. You told me too at one point that he, when he was a young man, and I don't know exactly when that was, he kind of went on a trip through Europe, like mm -hmm. in the footsteps of. Cezanne and Van Gogh, and mm -hmm. um, is was that his aspiration as a painter to really paint like these European 18th century masters? Yeah, yeah. I mean, those were definitely his his you know the people he looked up to, the artists that he looked up to. He studied at, at the uh, art academy in Munich, and of course, he those were the masters that you studied, and at, and. and um, but he loved that idea of, of traveling to you know beautiful exotic you know southern France and, and there's the you know the painting of Marseille mm -hmm. over there where he when he was on that plan air trip with his parents right um, he he would um, you know he would you know stop in all these famous places that you know Cezanne and, and Picasso had painted and he was very aware of where they were and where they painted and the different scenes and he wanted to follow in those footsteps. And um, yeah, and he painted plein air on plein air with his father. Yes, yep. And then he painted on plein air with his wife. Yep. And with his daughter. Mm -hmm. There's a real sense of um, interchange between the family members. Where were you two in that? What were you guys doing when uh, everybody yeah. was out plein air? <laughs> when everybody was out, yeah. <laughs> oh, we can have living out of our, our own lives, yeah, <laughs> just getting up to trouble. Or yeah. Yeah. We had our own but, program going yeah. on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but in terms of the, the, I was lucky enough to live in, in southern France a year, and, and then my parents came down to visit, and then we actually recreated that tour that he was on with his parents. So nice. it was actually really nice you know to, to go on that he was very proud of, of that you know that he um, that he actually also sponsored his parents he was very proud that he could um, you know pay for that and, and 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 take them on this beautiful trip so he was happy when um, I didn't sponsor them though but he, yeah <laughs> but he took he took me around so that was that was really nice but no but we were we were just you know Lars I mean it depends you know during well, we were we were really involved with looking at their artwork too because they would come back from from the European trips and they it was like a presentation right and they would sit yeah. back and they would, here's this one and and then my dad would pull it out of the box and how about this one <laughs> and then we would you know kind of comment about what we thought and what we liked and the, you know the favorites go over here and like you know it was it was a real we were involved a critique with, session yeah, yeah it was a critique session it, it was session. really exciting because we saw their work and we got to know you know what and we we're, we're very close to what you know throughout the years we could see what they're what they were painting and what they like, and so it was really fun to be part of that. Yeah, but we traveled to those places too. So we were, um, we would spend Christmas in, in Tenerife the year after our sister died. We we stopped sort of having this like Ephraim family Christmas just because it was too hard. So we started going to Tenerife, and um, that was became sort of what what we did, yeah. you know. So we got to experience that Christmas. and go out with them, and we we you know we'd go and stay for a month. I, we were both at university, so we had had like a month off in January. So we we'd go then, and um, and then if if we were you know in Europe, we'd go visit them in Rotenburg, and so we we were a part of it, not not the daily, but we experienced all these places. Um, pretty, you know, intimately with them. So that's been really special to I be able feel to like have that. My son, I, you know, I raised my son in, in, in Rome, Italy for, for, for 10 years, we were in Rome, Italy. And, um, you know, the one thing he wouldn't do for when he was a teenager was go to a museum because I dragged him through so many <laughs> museums. But, but now, but now he has this great appreciation of art. He has, he's an art collector and that's and all fantastic. of that. But I mean, I see a similarity there that you had this sort of in, intimate yeah. inside view of how art is created, what art, what artists are thinking, their philosophies, and yeah. how to examine art and look at it and watch it grow. Yeah, 
and that's what we talked about, you know, mm -hmm. and we, we, it was very much, yeah, just the way we, um, the way we were brought up, and I also think that's something that Lars and I have passed on to our kids, you mm -hmm. know, even though um, I think there's, you know, their, Lars's kids are very artistic, mine aren't very artistic, but they have a, a deep appreciation for art, and mm -hmm. I think we've instilled that in them, and um, I think Absolutely. we're really mm -hmm. happy that we could do that. What no. kind of artwork do, are your children involved with? What do they do? Music art. Music, yeah. <laughs> music art. But yeah. yeah, but performance art. So. Performance yeah. music. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that I love about the paintings, and I'm sure all of you do too, is they're full of secret messages, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They're the secret little scenes of people that they know. Lars, you're in several of these on this wall here, yeah. and friends getting married. So the figures, your mom, well, they both did it, right? I mean. Martha was telling me about in this painting here, there's a, a lighthouse painted into the painting somewhere, and I know where it is, but I didn't manage to get that onto the card, so people will just have to wonder and find it for themselves, but um, you can email me and I'll tell you where the, where the lighthouse is. But they love to do that. They love those hidden surprises. Mm -hmm. um, one of um, Karen Malzahn's paintings that she loaned us is this beautiful scene where he sets um, a still life with some of his treasured objects and the teapot and the teacup and the flowers and then in the teapot there's this tall slender image of himself in there they they like to do that yeah and they collaborated on painting quite a bit right mm -hmm. on the on a they did an annual christmas card for many years that they collaborated on and then um then the piece that's in the show that's karen's piece is is a Rotenberg scene where um, my mother painted the, the people and our uh, father painted the buildings. So, and they both signed it. So and they both signed it. Really special, yeah. And they would either work on gouache or watercolor when they col or, um, watercolor when they collaborated, right? Yes, yes. Because she only painted in acrylic. Mm -hmm. She did not do oil. No, she did not because do oil. she didn't like the smell and she said oh. it dried too slowly. She it tried, was, she wanted you know, it to move. Yeah, it has to go fast. So. So she definitely liked the acrylic, and our father the opposite. He liked oil because it dried slowly, and didn't like acrylic he could because revisit. it dried too quickly. So right. they both, yeah, had a different medium that they enjoyed working in. But watercolor, they could agree on. So if they collaborated, then it was that's in, what in they watercolor. did. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Well, I want to see if the audience has any questions for them. I do. Um, so. Your grandfather, their parents were artists also? Uh, my, our mother's father was Danish and he was a church, he made stained glass for churches. So he was, yes, he was very artistic and um, as well. And that's so who Carson that, would plan it. That, that's, that's, yeah, that's mother's. Ellen's, that's our Ellen's our uh, grandfather. Okay. And oh, then our uh, father's father was an architect and the and his mother was a sculptor. So yes, they were also artistic. But he liked to paint. He went, he went out painting. Yes, it was there. also, yeah. So he was, yeah, but he was more always, you know, painting the buildings. He was very architectural in his <clears throat> Drawings. Did either of your your parents do anything besides painting? Did they ever dabble in sculpture and? Uh, my dad did some uh, etchings, mm -hmm. but that's still kind of in the yeah, painting realm. Yeah, making, still in the yeah. But I don't recall it. And then he started painting. playing with the angled frames yes. and getting crafty. And yep. you took part in that, didn't that's you? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> so you were the carpenter. I was the. I yeah, was he the had carpenter. to make the frames. Yeah. He liked the idea though. So yeah, he liked the idea, so he <laughs> went, went for it. That's yeah. awesome. Any other questions? Candy. Your poster had this juicy word I never heard, and Zaik, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Yeah. Uh, I did a little Google search, and what is this word, and that it's uh, mid medieval guild, means guild in German, mm -hmm. and, but it went kaput in 1836, it said. Yep. So I wondered what that word meant, and how that philosophy and everything affected it. Yes, well, it's pronounced Hanseatic, and um, it's it, Hansa in, in, in German, and um, our mother was born in Hamburg, which was one of the Hansa cities. So it was a league of, um, of cities in, in the medieval, in medieval times, of trading cities and up, up in the Baltic and, and around. So it was a guild of, of these cities that had you know, different trade agreements, and, and they were called Hansa Städte. So, um, 
and, and Hamburg was is called the Hansestadt Hamburg. So, and she was very proud of that and, and they wanted a name. Also, they didn't want to call it the Topelman Gallery because maybe it wouldn't work out as the Topelman Gallery. <laughs> maybe in case day, they got a divorce. Well, well in, case, right, in case they would take another artist or in case right. they, you know, sure. would, would, so, and they, they wanted, they specifically chose to not call it the Topelman Gallery. So they looked for a name and, um, and they decided on the, the Hanseatic to be, to be the name. And they also liked the idea that of these, of the flags that they, you can see in, in the painting of, of the gallery. They, those are the, the Hansa colors of, of the, the flags in, in Hamburg, and that's a very much a um, emblematic of, of, of the Hansa uh, cities that the they, red and they white have these, these flags. Hamburg yeah. in particular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of the um, all of the different cities that were members of the Hanseatic League or guild. Yeah. Where they had their own flag. Yeah. Yeah. And then an emblem and yeah. they had color codes mm -hmm. and Hamburg's was of course red and red mm -hmm. and white stripes, mm -hmm. right? With Did a little the city have a certain style of painting or a school that no, that, that didn't have anything to do with like a, a, a painting guild or anything. It was a trade. It, it, purely just the name mercantile. of the city, okay. of the city, a trade in terms of, yeah, mercantile trading, uh, shipping, you know, uh -huh. that kind of trade, yeah. So it was just the name of the city that they chose uh -huh. and, and then to, to, to the way that they just created the, the outside of, of the building, but that it had meaning that it was where our mother was born. Uh -huh. They were always thinking yeah. ahead, huh? They were always having like a plan B. It seems yeah, to me. well, it was because they, when they first started, was that your they, mom or yeah, was that your was, dad? I don't know. Um, Both combo, of them. probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a backup plan because it was a big risk. You know, people sure. said, you know, you're crazy. You're gonna give up your job and move to Door County, and you, you've got young kids, and what are you doing? And people really were, you know, not sure that that was the right thing. But they were very convinced that they could do it. But but had a backup plan just in case and they made it work yeah and people loved them I mean if, if you don't mind me saying so in meeting Karen and Dick Malzin the sense of um, admiration and just really appreciation and dedication that 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 Karen in particular showed in speaking about your parents was really quite touching I mean people loved them yeah they they were special and I think you know, they loved people. They loved, you know, being with people. They loved inviting people to our house. You know, they, they were special and, and they, they had a lot of friends. And I think, you know, we were talking about this the other day that I think coming to the gallery was more than just coming to a gallery, that it was really about an experience that you got when you were in the gallery. So, and it didn't matter if you bought a painting or not. You know, our mother was interested in your life and, and she, she had a, um, she always would ask people how they met, you know, so she, she knew how everybody met and she had a very uh, strong memory so she could always um, repeat the story if you came back the next year. Oh, you were the ones that met, you know, when you were camping in Iowa and, you know, and people would be like, <laughs> what? No, you know, and so, and, and it makes people, um, you know, I think we all want to, you know, feel special, you know, and, and, um, and, she could do I that. She could do that. She could make people feel special, and I think that was. And she probably genuinely and, thought they were special. Yeah, yeah. She and she really did because she was just interested in people and in their lives, and and so I think that 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 was part of the you know what made the gallery successful was was this this experience that that you got. It wasn't just you know come in and they would never have anyone work in the gallery for them. Uh, you know they had to be there because that was part of the experience of what was. You know, meeting them and talking about the art and, and hearing about their lives and um, and she wouldn't let anyone pass through the gallery without talking to them. You know, she would you know, now how are you? And you know, where are you staying? And and she would, you know, now have you been here before? And then she would just give the, the story to, to everyone and never tired of it because that's what that's where she got her energy and I think that was the what made the, the, the gallery experience unique. That's a good impression too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it slipped out a little. I can do a very good impression. Ask my friends. I can imitate my mother very well. Any other questions, Karen? I, it, I just wanted to amplify something that you touched on a little bit earlier about, about you asked whether Carson experimented with sculpture or other things like that. Well, he didn't necessarily 
as you said, use other techniques like that, but he was always experimenting. He did a series of paintings on silk. He brought yeah. special yeah. paints to do all of that. I have a painting that he did on a tree stump. Oh, I mean, goodness. he was always just something new would come out there, and he would want to try it. Um, somebody did a series, of, Lars, you know more about this than I do, but a few, uh, some years ago of commemorative plates, and they Carson painted the first plate for that series. Yeah. yeah. But that was he was one of the people that you could always go to of when you had some idea for something new to do, whether it was the corner paintings um, later on in life or or earlier on, anytime something new came out, he would just try it. Yeah. And it was really cool to see how the things came out. Some of them were more successful than others. Most yeah. of them were quite, quite yeah. good. And he would get so excited, that little twinkle in his eye would, yeah. you know, and he would, he just got excited for, for new things and, and did, yeah, love to experiment and, um, yeah, it was, Well, you can yeah. see it in his paintings, his hand is very quick and free and hers is more mm -hmm. tight and specific and time consuming. So I, you could yeah. see that, that he would, in the self portraits, you can see that too, that he's just, you know, playful and experimenting. And I, I get the feeling, I mean, obviously he wanted a great painting and he, he striped for that, but I get the feeling that he, like, if a painting didn't work out, it didn't bother him. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he, he just, just kept going. Kept you know? going. Yeah. Could, you know, he didn't have that masterpiece syndrome that, um, no. as I refer to it, that, you, yeah. you know, you approach a canvas that it has to be the best painting you ever did. He just kind of went for it. Yeah, huh? yeah. and our mother very much, you know, her style, you can really recognize her style. Like, yeah. it's very consistent. And whereas our father was again much more experimental and um, yeah, and more prolific in a sense of subject matter. wider variety of, of mm -hmm. subject matter for yeah. sure. Yeah. And mediums too, like, yeah. like mediums. Uh, yeah. silk and things like that. Yeah. I have a question about the business of art. Um, it seems to me that they were very very early to uh, to the large scale distribution of prints mm -hmm. of their work. Yeah. yeah. And they're really very. Um, forefront of that, that way back in the, the 70s, some of the things that your dad did that were more of a, that showed the commercial uh, style that he had come from, yep. and then evolving over time, but what, 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 what germ, who came up with like, let's make prints and sell thousands of these? Well, I think it was also an accessibility question, you know, that the paintings weren't cheap, you know, and, and so people would come in and they would want to buy something, but they couldn't afford it. So right. then it was like, well, okay, we can reproduce this and get a very good reproduction quality. And for those that can't afford original, they can buy a print. So it was a really good business model, you know, and but it also satisfied... Yeah, they of course it was profitable for them, but it was also a way to share the artwork and make it more accessible to you know different um, people. I mean, I am the first to tell artists all the time, um, you know, be dedicated to your artwork and always be striving for your personal best, but create merch. You need merch. Like yeah. as yeah. a museum, we <laughs> want it in our gift shop. We we need something that we can. I mean, not everybody can buy a painting, that's the thing. Yeah, not everyone yeah. can buy a painting, but pretty much everybody can walk away with the card or the catalog yeah. or, you know, get some merch. Yeah, so they can connect with it in, in their way at, a, at their accessible... They can remember it. Yeah. They can yeah. remember it. You yeah, know? yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I do that when I go to a museum. I yeah. get the book, I get the card, I get the this, the, I get the that, you know. Yeah. I always have to walk away with some merch. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead if there's someone else. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm Carrie Anderson, and I know Lisa from way, way, way back at the Cooker's days when we were six <laughs> in high school. And um, I'm so proud of you. And uh, Lars is the quiet one here today, but um, I just want to sing some praises for him. I know that he moved back to Ethan to take care of his dad mm -hmm. several years. to your parents and to Germany and your education, correct me if I'm wrong, you were
director at the Holocaust Museum? According to my mother, I was the director. <laughs> <laughs> I was the curator. But to, in my mother's words, I was the director. That's, a, that's a good job, too. Yeah, yeah she, she was. She you. liked to show off a little bit, yeah. But. Well, but yeah. Good for your mom to say that. And then just one more thing. Um, I'm so glad I came today because so much of the puzzle comes together for me. Um, if your parents came here in 1956, which was a good year because that was here I was born, <laughs> but um, and I was from Iowa, <laughs> they must have survived World War II. And when we look at these beautiful, joyful paintings and know that they survived the horror of World War II. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, uh, I mean, it's just kind of leaves me speechless. So that's all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Carson was telling a story about uh, his time, you know, outside of Munich in a, in a small village, and that the, um, at the near the end of World War II, when they were uh, marching Jews out of Dachau over the border, which were even close to the Austrian border, beginning, and that he actually was on the roadside and saw this enormous line of people being forcibly marked yeah. out of the country. Well, I think just getting, yeah, it, and I think, that, again, that living through something like that and seeing the things that they saw, I think it, it really, it's just, that they just wanted to bring beauty to the world, you yeah, know, because sure. they, they, why would you, bring something, you know, with having lived through all of that, it, it, it's a natural thing to just want to create uh, beauty, I think, and, and that was their, that's what they wanted, and especially our mother, you know, because she chose Europe as, as, as sort of, the backdrop. very European as the backdrop, and so in her mind, it was this place, you know, before the war that was beautiful and, and, and untouched. I mean, there were always wars, but I mean, I think we can all agree, you know, World War II was one of the worst. <laughs> Um, and and you know th all the destruction that, that that she lived through and and, and that she saw and um, that it just that just want to create these 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 yeah this beauty that that they wanted to share and, and give people uh, beauty rather than something you know that was that was painful or something that was would bring back negative memories so I think yeah that was that of course hugely influenced them to, um, when you have the power to create it yeah, yourself, why exactly. create something dark? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the yeah they, they that was their objective to to because uh, they were survivors too. You know yeah. they they were, I mean you know and they deeply affected them and um, they yeah. clearly spoke about such things with friends, right? Did they did they talk about their experiences with the family a lot? Did you guys talk especially about our like mother? That? Yeah. yeah, she was yeah very you know she, if we had a problem. <laughs> I lived through the war, you know, so, she, you know, so it was anything. You couldn't go with any, any was whining nothing, and crying. No, 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 there's no. nothing compared to that. So yeah, no, just, well, Claire, yeah, she's yeah. right. She was right, she was always right. What's so, you gonna do? Yeah, so no, so yes, she did talk of it. It, it, it deeply affected her and, and she, when people would listen, it was, you know, we were growing up, it was like, ah, oh, that again, you know, we, Kind of, we didn't want to hear it because Don't we heard the it. Don't pull out the card. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and we, but it was tough times, you know, and. And you are related to Karsten or to Ellen? To, You're the auntie. Uh, I'm, I'm the sister-in-law to Ellen and Karsten. My husband was the brother of Ellen. I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. So, and all of, yeah, our mother's uh, siblings are, are past, and so, and Heidi is, yeah, the, the, the widow of, of yeah. um, uh, my mother's brother. And Wilbur. did you travel to be here today, or are you from yep. Burke County? They, with, with the son. They oh. drove was, up from St. Louis oh, yesterday, and they're going Appreciate back today. They came up just for today, so. That's wonderful. And that tall guy back there, that's Dirk, that's my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> the guy that needs no chair. <laughs> you had a question, sir. Yes, I did. You know, there's another artist who called Burke County his home. And he was German descent, and uh, he would go to Europe every winter and uh, see the things, you know, do his sketches. Uh, was there ever any interaction or collaboration with their art? No. And not collaboration, but they knew each other, and yeah. um, they would often come for lunch. Our mother was a very good lunch. Uh, a server, a very good cook, so she had a lot of dinner parties, a lot of lunch parties, and 
and they were good friends with the Ingersons and with the with the mill uh, with the, the Millers, and then they other artists, the the uh, Pechmans and um, you know uh, Andrew Redman. You know, so they they had parties and they socialized, and especially in the early years, you know, there was a lot going on. Um, but then in the later years, it was more you know tame you know, dinner parties and lunch parties and, and that, but and, and any kind of artistic collaboration with, with Gerhard Miller, no, but uh, with, with James Ingerson, yes, they were a part of the, um, the painting uh, classes, the, the uh, sketch classes Sketching that they would have. Sketching that barn. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would, there's two that you'll see in the exhibit here and, and some upstairs, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, James, James, in, in, in also the James Ingerson upstairs, right? Yeah. Um, uh, he was telling us about that too, about the Car Carson and Ellen coming to the barn drawing sessions and mm -hmm. taking their turn sitting as models on, yeah. on occasion mm -hmm. as, as they as that sort of system system went. And they had a bit of a critique session after that too. So I guess that was artistic engagement, but they wouldn't you know you know travel together or anything like that. But very much. Well, I feel like we could do this all, all evening. <laughs> I, I do want to wrap it up and pull out some refreshments and let us walk around and look at the exhibits. You guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Does anyone... <laughs> it's been to work on this show with you guys. I really um, learned a lot and I feel like I missed out on a little something here in Door County. Yeah. A little late coming, but um, it was really a pleasure working with you and I appreciate all the efforts that you made in coming here today. Um, thank you to you, the audience. Now, this is the studio door and there's one question that I always ask on the studio door to kind of close it out and I don't know how it's going to play out with you guys, but what advice do you have for young artists um, who are looking to fulfill a dream the way your parents fulfilled a dream? What would you, what would you tell them? Uh, stick to your guns and work really, really hard. <laughs> have a plan well, B. Yeah, have, have a plan B. Really yeah, hard. but I think also what our parents always said, you know, to to Lars, you know, because he was starting out as a photographer, is like, oh. Does the world need another photographer? You know, but but our father always said, you know, yeah, it, it needs, uh, there's always room for one good photographer more. Yeah. You know, so there's always room for one right. good artist more, or one dedicated artist more. So perfect. Don't give up and just you know follow your dreams and um, and just give it a go. You know, and yeah, don't give up. 